Um, but the title of this, uh, this week's blog is called Going Out on a Limb for Jesus. Going Out on a Limb for Jesus. We know that Peter was one who was uh, willing to risk and he was, he was always going out on a limb. In fact, he wasn't just going out on a limb, he was going out on water um, to be with Jesus. And <clears throat> that spirit that, that was in him, even though a lot of times it was um, maybe fleshly motivated, uh, there was something deep in his heart for Jesus. And that's the whole story of why he walked on the water was to get to Jesus. He said to Jesus, can I come to you on the water? And Jesus said, come. And the whole point was he wanted to come to him. And um, I think that a lot of times when we go out on a limb, um, we do it because we're, we're risking because we love the Lord. We want to get to the Lord. And sometimes it takes busting a move, as we say in, in uh, Texas, to get to, get to the Lord. <clears throat> and um, uh, and I, I know that probably all of us at some time or another have gone out on a limb for Jesus on some, some level. But I want to I want to talk specifically about uh, what the scriptures describe in Luke chapter 19, <clears throat> verse 1 through 9. And um, if you'll turn there, if you have your Bibles, turn with me. Luke chapter 19, verse 1 through 9. And this man really actually did go out on a limb for Jesus. His name was Zacchaeus. <laughs> and uh, so, um, you know. He did even more than Peter. He actually went out on a limb for Jesus. So I'm going to read it. It's uh, Luke 19, verses 1 through 9. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him, and he said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide in thy house. And he made haste and he came down and he received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much he as he also is a son of Abraham. The first thing, obviously, to note about Zacchaeus is that he wanted to see Jesus. And that means a lot, that terminology means a lot to us who love the Lord and who are seeking the Lord with all of our hearts and want and desire earnestly to become conformed to the image of Christ, to see Jesus. I think of the Greeks that were seeking Jesus and they said, sir, we would see Jesus. And he sought to see Jesus, but the wording there in verse 3 is, is very telling about the man's heart and you know, we always emphasize that it's important to see the heart of the Lord. Um, but it's good to read the scriptures so that we can find anyone's heart. And usually that heart is for the Lord. And in this case it was. Zacchaeus' heart. He wanted to see Jesus, but here's what it says. He wanted to see Jesus who he was. Who he was. He wanted to know who he was, not just what he can do for him or... Um, you know, uh, there are people who want to see Jesus because they want to be touched or they want to be ministered to or um, uh, they want, you know, some 
some uh, contact with Jesus that might make them more spiritual. See something of Jesus in the Word, and they can share it and impress people with what they know. You don't get any of that with Zacchaeus. You don't, you don't find that kind of a spirit here. You find someone, as it said, that he's little of stature, but he wants to see Jesus who he is. He wants to see who he is. He wants to know who he is. And, um, and that's, that's a huge part of what this story is about. And then the scriptures go on to say, well, he, they, he couldn't get to him for the press. And, of course, this isn't talking about newspapers and TV reporters, but the crowds, the crowds, the people that were crowding around Jesus. And, um, you know, one of the things you have to face is that if you're, if you're, going to try to seek Jesus, there's always going to be a crowd. The crowd may not have the same motivation. The crowd may have their own agenda. But your goal is to get past all the crowds. And we're going to see that, that that's exactly what took place with him. And, and the scripture is declaring that he was little of stature means that um, it means we're not big enough. <laughs> It means we're not strong enough. It means that we're not capable of gaining all that we need apart from seeing Jesus. And, um, and sometimes we let our littleness, whether that's our failures or that's our um, uh, regrets or that's our past, we let all of these things that have made us little in our eyes, or maybe little in other people's eyes, we let, we let all of those things slow us down or keep us from getting to Jesus. And that is sad because Jesus doesn't measure us by that. You know. In fact, the, the scriptures say that the Father measures us by Christ. Till we all come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Well, yet that measure has nothing to do with us or our measure or how, you know, what we have on our own or what abilities we have or what lack we have. See, you know, someone is deceived because they, they uh, have abilities and they think this is going to really get them to the Lord. And other people uh, feel because they're lack that that's going to keep them from getting to the Lord. Nothing will keep you getting to Jesus if your heart just says, Jesus, I want you for you. Uh, and then in verse 4, um, it says that he ran before. He ran before. Um, and I kind of like it because it says he ran before. Like he ran in front of, he ran beyond the crowd. He, he just went, I have got to get to him. And he just Instead of going with the crowd, oh, yes, you know, we're seeking Jesus and everything. We're all, you know, just moseying along here. He runs to get past the crowd so that he can see Jesus. And I just, I just like that. I just like that spirit and that heart. And, um, you know, sometimes we think it is... Um, we misuse the, the term about being with the body. Yes, yes, yes. It's huge. We are part of the body of Christ. We're not separate. We're part of the bride. We're not separate. But there is an individual pursuit that our heart must go after Jesus. And sometimes that means running after the crowd or letting the crowd leave you and you stay back. It just depends. Um, and then it says uh, that he climbed up into a sycamore tree. And, of course, we know that the tree is used throughout the New Testament as the cross. And that's important. That's important. That, uh, you can't leave. Anytime you tell this story, regardless of what angle you come to, the tree has to be the center point of being able to see Jesus. That's all there is to it. You can't get around that. And um, so... Uh, if, if Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus, he's going to have to get up on this tree. 
he's going to have to pursue it. If you and I want to see Jesus, we're going to have to climb up and get on the cross, as it were. We're going to have to see ourselves crucified with Christ. We're going to have to understand that seeing Jesus means being nailed to the cross with him. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And seeing yourself as well as Jesus from that place, you see yourself on that tree also. And, and Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Um, so when we see Jesus from the cross, then he is lifted up in the right way. I mean, we can see Jesus feeding the multitudes. We can see Jesus healing all the sick. But Jesus didn't say, if I heal the sick, everybody would be drawn, even though people were. But they were drawn with the wrong motivation. And Jesus said, if I be lifted up on the cross, this spoke what man of death that he was going to die. Um, and so, um, then verse 5 um, I wrote down, Jesus wants to find us in the tree. <laughs> I love that. He wants to find us in the tree. He, he wants to find us on the cross with him. He wants us, you know, we all say, oh, I want to be one with Jesus. Oh, I, I love Jesus. I just want to be one with Jesus. Well, you're going to be one with him at Calvary. You're going to be one with him at the cross, you know. And that's where oneness begins. And if it doesn't begin there, there is no oneness in resurrection until there's a oneness in that cross. So Jesus wants to find us in the tree. Um, and why? Why? Um, because he hates us or all the things that we go through? No, no. He wants to find us in the tree because then he can come in as our life. Then Jesus, when he see, if he sees us just following him for the for the loaves and fishes, you know, no. But if he sees us in the tree, he knows that we're open. We are. We have opened our hearts, even unto death, to have his life. And that's the most important thing to our hearts. Um, and uh, uh, so when when he sees us from that tree, when he, when he, the Lord, knows that we have put ourselves in that tree. And we did it because we wanted to see Jesus. We wanted to have him um, more than just pass by like everybody else was pleased to do. Jesus sees that heart and he says, Okay, now come down because I'm going to have to abide with you. And you know the scriptures in uh, John 15. If you abide in me and I'll abide in you. Uh, you'll bring forth much fruit. And so there is this, uh, the truth is we never leave the place of the cross, but there is a place in knowledge or in, let me say it better, in, a, in relating to the Lord where he begins to abide. And it is the crucified that abides in us. And he begins to abide within us. And from the inside of us now, not just from the tree, but from the inside of us, um, he begins to be seen. He begins to, we, we begin to be transformed into that same image. What, a, what an incredible phrase to be transformed into that image. Because that would be transformed. That's, we're so different from him that to, to, if he was like us, we might be changed to that. But that word change is actually the word transformed, transfigured. It's all the same word. So, um, uh, he wants to abide, and he wants to abide in, in our house, inside of us, inside of our bodies. And then verse uh, 7, um, the, the, I don't know if you noticed, but the people started murmuring. You know, they're murmuring about what's going on here, and they murmur that um, Zacchaeus is not worthy, and Jesus shouldn't be hanging out with him, and the, uh, but you know the cross, the when when Zacchaeus got in that tree, the tree didn't make him worthy, and therefore Jesus said, "Hey, since you're a tree climber, I'm going to come in your house with you, and we're going to hang out." The cross doesn't make you worthy. The cross makes you dead. And when you're dead, then he's your life. Then he abides in you. Does that make sense? There's a beautiful progression there. It's very simple and yet 
it, it, it's profound. It'll change your whole life. Um, and uh, then I wrote down, if you do these things, this order, and you're following after the Lord, and you want to see the Lord, uh, if, you if you do these things, you'll see Jesus stop and call you closer. Because, th see, and none of those are works. They're not works. They're heart reactions almost. They're not even hard actions. They're not hard actions. They are heart reactions to really seeing the Lord. And he got up and saw Jesus from the cross. And that was a reaction. Everything's a reaction in him to the beauty of Jesus and to the desire for Jesus and, and wanting uh, Jesus. Um, so I also wrote, it wasn't until Zacchaeus got a hold of, of the tree that he could truly see Jesus, who he was. Remember the first couple of verses there. He wanted to see Jesus, who he was. Well, praise God, the scriptures fulfilled that. When Zacchaeus got hold of the tree and got on the tree, then he could truly see Jesus as he was. The, the Lamb of God slain, the slaughtered lamb, the, uh, the selfless one, the selfless being who is not bound by restraints of religion or mental pictures of who he is just the selfless being to his core. And then the last thing, the last bit I want to share here is um, verse 1 and 2. I, I, shared, I started at verse 3 and 4. Um, so if you do have your Bible, let's look at verse 1 and 2 there. And it, and, uh, it says, uh, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. The, 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 pub, the word publican in the King James means tax collector. And this guy is a Jew working for Rome, uh, taxing God's people. And they were very looked down on, just almost the worst that you could have in Israel because they were Jews, but they were serving Rome and, and, and uh, oppressing God's people. <clears throat> and, you know, Jesus, the, the New Testament name for Jesus, Jesus, but in the Old Testament it's Joshua. You know, Joshua came to Jericho also. And they came there and he sent spies out. And the spies went into that city and uh, they found one person that was open to the truth. And her name was Rahab and she was a harlot just like Zacchaeus was the worst in the nation. She was the worst in the nation. And, uh, and her heart was open, and Zacchaeus' heart was open. And when, when, Jesus, when Joshua came through there, the whole walls and everything fell down. But she survived, and not only survived, she came and became one of the people of God. And she not only became one of the people of God, but she's in the lineage of Christ. She's the line through which Jesus came. And that's what higher honor could there be. And Zacchaeus, he's passing through Jericho. And in the eyes of God, as far as he's concerned, those walls all caved in on all those people too. And Zacchaeus, he stopped and he said, I'm coming and I'm coming in. Because you chose the cross, just like she put the red cord out. You chose the cross. And, and uh, it doesn't tell you beyond that, because you melt into, Zacchaeus melts into Jesus and becomes one, just like we do. Bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. Uh, Rahab just melted in and became part of Jesus, and became part of who he was, and became part of the delivery system by which Jesus was birthed. That's all Matthew chapter 1. So let's just close with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you that there are no limitations on your being. Uh, Lord, we ask you to forgive us, Father, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit because of our, our lack of comprehending you beyond religion. We ask you to help us to see into your heart. We ask you to relieve us of all of our religious baggage 
and open our eyes so we could see you. Open our hearts so that we'd be open to the cross and open our eyes so that from the cross we can finally see you as you are, like Zacchaeus asked. We ask in Jesus' name.